I'm honestly not sure when I became obsessed with buffalo. This past winter, the stars seemed to align for me. A lifelong dream had finally come true, and I crossed something off my bucket list. It was early, and it was cold, and we were heading to northern Saskatchewan for a buffalo hunt. Matt is actually my wife's cousin. I got him to explain a little about his ranch and how it operates. I've been bison ranching for about five years now and about, got about a hundred head. And uh, I bought a new bull this summer. He's about 20, 2,300 pounds, my new guy. And this guy is only 1,800. But he, uh, they haven't seen eye to eye. And this guy actually was running the, running the pen there for a bit. He uh, showed that big bull how, how things were for a bit. And uh, <laughs> then they got into it again and he would come out on the lower end, but they just keep fighting. and Kind of got to split them up before something happens to one of them. Yep. Big Red was a big bull. But the former herd bull that Matt's referring to as this guy may have been smaller, but he had twice the attitude. The two bulls had to be separated, and this guy had to be isolated for his own protection as well as the protection of the herd. Are these all cows? And there's like one bull for all of them? Or? It uh, kind of the same as beef, same ranges, kind of. It depends on who you talk to, but lots of guys, they run. 10 to 20 cows and heifers per bull and that kind of thing and all in one big herd though yeah yeah and, and most some of these bulls get along because they have their yeah, little once, once they figure out their little pecking order yeah they uh kind of figure their thing out and they'll disappear in bachelor groups and it's not free breeding season stuff oh, yeah. they'll go in the bush and lay down and do their own thing and stuff and as long as you got one kind of lead bull he keeps everything in check and keeps the young guys doing what they should be doing and they'll even watch what the cows are doing they start scrapping stuff and he kind of it's so kind of funny, yeah, they all kind of just rule the roost. Cool. Nice cows are in that usually 12, 13, 1400 pound range. Yeah. And bulls just might... let a bull go and see how big it can yeah. get, right? Yeah, Well, that's Same kind of red there, yeah. <laughs> big as they get. Breeding up on it, the biggest one domestic was uh, in Texas, the world record I read on the internet, and it was 3,800 pounds. 3,800 pounds? I can't even imagine the size of that animal. That's knocking on the door of twice as big as Big Red. At 2,300 pounds, he towered over the cows and even the other bulls. Walking amongst a herd of buffalo is an experience itself. Their sheer size and strength is out of this world. The ground literally shakes as they walk by. I can't help but let my mind drift back in time and imagine what it would have been like to witness thousands of these animals running across the plains. It would have felt like an earthquake and you might have even thought that the world was falling apart. Three years old the bulls and then they'll breed till 10 to 12 kind of thing. Oh, okay. And then, uh, yeah, then my heifers over there, about 1,100 pounds, you butcher them at. And yeah. Just, you get a nice young animal yeah. and it's grain fed and finished too. I got them on free choice grain over there. Yeah. So they do get some fat on, but it's amazing how little fat there actually is on them. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. for being on grain and stuff. But... When you first see them, they all look the same. It's like anything, they all look the same. But as you get out there, it's like now my I've been around cattle and have worked with horses, but I'd never been intimidated like I was around these creatures. It was as though they would stare straight at your soul, like they were here first and you did not belong. I could have spent all day here. Being so up close and personal with an animal I've so highly regarded for so long was like nothing else. Matt's herd was beautiful, happy, healthy, and growing. It was a privilege to be around them, and I left there with an even deeper love for the animal and a greater respect for the ranchers that take care of them. 
The rich history and deep story inside the eye of each animal was truly humbling. But now it was my turn to create a story. My own tale of the American Buffalo. The modern day dinosaur. Brought to you by BJS Taxidermy. Killing Sticks Premium Carbon Fiber Arrows. We jumped back in the Jeep and Matt took us to what he called the Back 40. A seemingly forgotten landscape of thick forest and frozen marshland. This year's substantial snowfall and cold air made for a forest that was so quiet it was eerie. The silence was deafening and the only thing I could hear was my heart beating in my chest with excitement and anticipation for the events that were about to unfold. I was about to embark on an adventure I had only ever dreamed about and I was chomping at the bit to get started. Uh, we're just getting things rolling here on our buffalo hunt. Uh, Weather straightened out a little bit on us, hey? Like, yeah, roads are pretty place. sketchy coming up here, but <laughs> there is a pile of snow to get through, so this is going to be a lot harder than we thought. But, <laughs> well, uh, um, but, yeah, Ben was wondering about bison hunts and if I had any mature bulls to go. So yeah, this guy is eight years old at Woods Cross, and uh, he should be should be a pretty nice animal, I hope for yeah. you. Yeah. Well, if he's anything like the other ones we've seen this morning, it'll be yeah, it'll be perfect. Exactly <laughs> what we're after. So. We got him on 160 acre pen here, about 130 acres of bush in it. And so he might be a little fun finding in three, four feet of snow. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm cold right now, but I'm sure we'll be sweating in no time. So, but daylight's wasting. Yeah. We might as well get at her, get warmed up, and see what we can do. So. Yeah. <laughs> As we made our way across the frozen plain, we quickly realized this was going to be harder than we had thought. The deep snow covered by frozen drifts, covered by more deep snow, made walking near impossible. It didn't take long in these conditions for doubt to start setting in. How would I ever get close enough to any animal to harvest them with my bow? But we trudged on, looking for signs of life in these vast frozen woods. Eventually, we found some relief. Matt's dad had been doing some logging in the area and used a skitter to remove the fell trees. The skitter had left random, meandering trails of easy walking, which turned out to be exactly what we were looking for. We found a trail, and the buffalo also uses a trail, so. <laughs> this might make it easier, we'll see. Nobody enjoys walking through that snow, no, including them. No, that's too deep. <laughs> We know there's a buffalo around. <laughs> <laughs> the skitter tracks proved to be an attractant to all kinds of wildlife. Birds, squirrels, rabbits, coyotes, and even buffalo. It didn't take long to find fresh tracks. We determined which direction he was headed and came up with a plan to get after him. Frequent snowfall revealed which animal sign was the most recent. And as we rounded the first corner, we realized we were hot on his trail. Exhausted from our morning's hike, our bodies were quickly rejuvenated as adrenaline surged through our veins. Out of the corner of his eye, Matt caught the slightest bit of movement. As we peered through the trees, a giant soon revealed itself. Mm. 
I readied myself, checked the wind, and tried to get into position for the most ethical shot. I made my move. But I knew instantly this was a feeble attempt. This bull was no livestock number. This was an instinctual animal and he knew something was up. He knew I didn't belong there and he left me wondering what to do next. We gave him some time before we pursued. We continued down the trail to a clearing we knew was up ahead. And wouldn't you know it, we popped out right behind him. I didn't anticipate the surprise of coming out right behind the bull. He was just out of bow range, but I was too exposed to move forward. In the fear of spooking him further, all we could do was stay put. We watched as he proceeded to lay down and roll, marking his territory. He almost seemed to taunt us, knowing that there's nothing we could really do at this time. He stood for quite a while and took a long, hard look at us studying who these strangers may be and why we were following him. If we moved, he moved, and eventually he carried on his way. He stopped only once to look back before disappearing into the trees. Again, we were left trudging through the snow we had left the comfort of the skitter track and were now on the trail of the bull. And again, this was proving to be a more difficult hunt than I had predicted. The conditions made tracking easy. It was trying to keep up with an animal in his domain that proved to be hard. Sundown was drawing near and I began to think this might take more than one day. Might be just day one. We made it through the swamp, really deep snow. <laughs> looks like the buffalo is tired too. <laughs> yeah, he took a bit of a nap, looks like. Back into the swamp he goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might lay down here too. <laughs> oh. Take a breather anyway. Stuff's going. <laughs> Turn it into work. <laughs> Been on easier hunts, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we catch up to him soon. Yeah. You can plow through easier. <laughs> right? The sun was now setting and we were a long way from the Jeep. We decided to pull out for the day let things cool down in the forest. Our failed plan for a stalk was no match for the elusive nature of the bison, and I had already pushed him harder than I wanted to. As I went home that night, I was surprised that nothing had happened, but enthralled that it wasn't over. I stayed up late and thought of a new plan for day two. We arrived the next morning at daybreak. I had an idea in my head of what to do, but wasn't sure that it would work. The buffalo was unlike anything else I've ever hunted. They didn't seem to follow the same rules as deer or moose. Whether it was their evasive tendencies 
or the fact that they were so big and fearless, but they went where they wanted, when they wanted, without any method or pattern. And you could only hypothesize at what they would do next. So, day two of the buffalo hunt. This might be a high fence hunt, but let me tell you, it is now cakewalk. There's a lot of snow, there's a lot of ground to cover, and uh, for a 2,000 pound animal, they are sneaky and quiet <laughs> running through the trees. So, and it's hard to get on them. Uh, we seen them in the morning a couple times and then that was it. We chased them all day and we couldn't even get eyes on them again. So we're going to uh, kind of assess the situation here this morning and try a new game plan, I think. So, what? Get in there and see what it looks like. We headed back into the forest to the alluring nature of the skitter tracks. The trouble-free walking the tracks provided were enough to attract me and every other animal in the forest. They had to attract a buffalo too. And I was right. For once I was thinking like the buffalo. My excitement was renewed. It was early in the morning, and we were already miles ahead of where we were yesterday. Looks like he cut back north. Yeah, he'll be. Looks like he's heading in on the same trail he came in on before. Try to cut him off. It's hard to see. <laughs> it's hard to see in the streets. 2,000 pounds of <laughs> power. Can't see. And quiet. Yeah, good camouflage. <laughs> We've had our first visual, and instead of going after him, we headed in the opposite direction. Oh, booter, bad legs keep up. <laughs> There is no way to know if this new plan would work, but we had no other options, and our only choice was to try. We put our heads together and picked what we thought was the best place to lay an ambush. Then we sat and waited. When you're wishing on a star, every second seems like an eternity. And after what seemed like a lifetime, this beast rounded the corner. And just like he vanished yesterday, he seemed to appear out of thin air today. I took a deep breath and tried to slow my heart rate. This had happened so fast and I wasn't even ready. But just as reality hit me, my target turned and walked away. He stopped in range, but with no clear shot. And just as I was brainstorming on how to seize the opportunity, he turned back toward me. He was now fully committed. This was going to happen.
All right, so we're gonna do the walk up here. <laughs> Man, I'm excited. That was intense. I've never been, these animals are huge, absolutely huge. And you see them on TV, you see them in books, and it's nothing until you're right beside them. And uh, yesterday we chased them all day. We were tracking them through, and there's four or five feet of snow in areas. Like, it's tough. So today we've seen them, we kind of got back into this area where they're, they're doing a bunch of logging, and uh, there's kind of snow roads all back in here. And uh, we've seen them in the area. It's easier for him too, right? So, and we just kind of knew where he might go and we cut him off, we got ahead of him and we just waited him out for, I don't know how long it was. It wasn't too terribly long, but, and we just kind of behind a fallen tree. And as he come by, stood up and he stopped to look at me. And I waited till he turned and opened up a bit and I let him have it. And he didn't get too far. He laid down right on the road, which is nice because getting him out of here is going to be a heck of a lot easier than trying to pack him out of the snow. So we'll do a walk up and uh, man, I can't wait to get my hands on this thing. What a, just a beautiful animal. There you have it, a dream come true. This beautiful bowl is a check off of my bucket list. With this beast, I was able to feed my family as well as bless others with some free meat in a time when grocery bills continue to climb. I was truly blessed with this opportunity. New friends and a full sack of memories and stories to share with others.
Thank you so much for watching. It took a lot of time and effort, so I hope you enjoyed it. You'd do me a huge favor if you would like and share, even comment on this video. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And we look forward to seeing you next time we walk into the orange.